Why does the black man serve the white man? Why does everything the black man do benefit the white man? Why does the black man say freedom is doing what I want to do? And why is it that everything he wants to do enriches the European? Welcome to the desert of the real. You wonder what I see in your future? No. Yes? I never saw your future, only its possibilities. You have such a capacity for goodness. You always excelled, but not because you craved success, but because of your fear of failure. That's what made me a great doctor. It's precisely what kept you from greatness. Arrogance and fear still keep you from learning the simplest and most significant lesson of all. Which is? It's not about you. Peace, fam. This is your brother, Mr. Holipsism. Um, today's topic for my video is it's not about you. Um, one of the things that, that and this message is basically for the people who listen to these videos, who listen to black nationalist oriented videos. I mean, whatever <laughs> that demographic are the people who listen to conscious community content and cultural conscious content. I feel just to be positive that there's a lot of there are a lot of people who give microphone time to people that they shouldn't give it to now why they do that that's up for another video some people say that people love drama and if you can talk about drama and if you can have beef that people will engage in that there's an element of truth to that there's people that say if you reinforce or you pander to people's self-hatred, then people will support you and, and co-sign you and pass your videos. Like if, in other words, if you're saying black people ain't shit, and most of those black people who are self-hating think that black people ain't shit, then they'll co-sign you and pass your videos and make them viral. I don't want to take that pessimistic point of view. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more positive in my assessment of why these people I'm gonna I'm just gonna say a lot of people just can't tell the difference between what's live and what's Memorex you know um, kind of dating myself with that <laughs> reference there but you know what's real and what's not and one of the things that you can use to determine as a litmus test for what's real and what's not is the motivation of the person giving the message now, I haven't made no big announcements about this, but I just want people to know I don't make a dime off my YouTube videos. I've totally demonetized my channel. Now, people are saying, well, why would you do that? Well, as a principle, and this is just for me, I'm not imposing this on anybody else. You're free to do whatever you want to do. This is me and a personal thing for me. I don't feel comfortable making money off of black people. Um, when it comes to anything involving social, political, economic, and cultural issues. I just got a problem with it. I feel about that the same way I do about politics. Like, you can be involved in politics, but you don't have to make your, um, your existence off of politics. In other words, just because I'm a politician, why can't I um, be a businessman too, or an entrepreneur? Why do I have to be totally dependent on public funds in order for me to be a politician because that's what you call career politicians people that are just there to make you know to live off the government teat which is basically living off the people's teat forever me personally I believe in term limits I believe that you should be there for a short period of time I believe that while you're there you should be a mentor or training someone else to take your spot 
and you should be out of there and you should engage in, in the um, in the life of a public you know, citizen. You shouldn't be a career politician where that's where you make your money because I believe the people um, that get into politics should have the mindset that they're servants and representatives and not on some Chris Christie shit where you feel like you're dealing like where you are an elite and you're dealing with serfs. It's impossible for you to be an elite when you're basically making your money from taxes from the people. But I don't want to get, you know, in the woods on this. But I just say that for me as a principal, I don't make my money off of black people. I have a job. I have a career. I have other things that I can engage in where I make my money. So I don't need to turn Holipsism's haven into some profit making machine or some way for me to, um, you know, to make money. Like I have on my Holipsism's haven site, I have a donation button and I don't really even push that. Like it's just there. But you don't hear me on any of my videos talking about, please donate to Holipsism's Haven. I Holipsism's Haven and what I feel and what I think, I'm going to express to the world if I don't get one donation. You know, I don't rely on, on donations for me to make my message or for me to put out how I feel. And the way that I see it, um, this channel is my expression. My personal expression for what I feel. It can be about a freaking movie. It can be about sports. It can be about social, economic, and political issues. It can be about cultural issues. It can be about nationhood. Whatever I feel like talking about, I talk about. And my general attitude with YouTube is fuck YouTube. YouTube does not control what I say or how I say it. So that's one of the reasons why I de like when people like when YouTube Pocalypse came and all of these um, channels that deal with news and, and issues got hit hard because if you're dealing with um, certain issues, they would basically algorithm you out and take away your advertising. So a lot of people lost revenue. I didn't have to worry about that because I didn't make any revenue off of YouTube anyway. So you can't stop me from talking about any issue that I want to talk about because you don't make me any money, YouTube. So fuck you. Fuck your advertisers. I hope that there's no advertisers when anybody clicks on my videos. When you click on my videos, it goes straight to my content. Because fuck YouTube, fuck the advertisers, and fuck anybody who feels that they can monitor and censor what I say. So that's just me as a principal. You know you're dealing with real people when it comes to these um, so-called representatives and black leaders or whatever you want to call them when they're not the focal point of their message, where their brand isn't what they're more concerned about than the content and, the, and, and our collective situation. You know? If you want to make money, make money the way average citizens make money. Get yourself a skill. You know what I'm saying? Go out there and either become an entrepreneur, get a job, you know, get a decent paying job, whatever. Whatever puts some money in your pocket and allows you to um, provide food, clothing, and shelter for yourself and your family. I have no um, beef with you over that. But I think it's a conflict of interest when you make your money off the struggle. That's just me. It's sort of, it's sort of, I think the same thing is happening within the DNC, the Democratic Party. Um, there are people in the Democratic Party that feel that if you take money from big donors, that you can't represent the people. And I think they have an a excellent point with that. Then there are other people that say, well, no, I can take money from big donors, but that doesn't mean that I don't, they're, they're going to um, influence my decisions. Well, if that's the case, why are you taking money from them? If they don't influence your decisions, then why are you taking their dough? What, they're just giving you dough because you're just... Bernie, Barney Frank, I believe that's his name, he actually said that big donors give him money because he's interesting. He actually said that. He said it on a Bill Maher show. And when he said it, I'm like, this guy is a fucking dickhead. Or, this, or either he's thinking that everybody is stupid. And it's the same thing with the so-called conscious community. Like, listen... 
I feel that if you have a vested interest in the struggle, then you have no need to see that struggle change. If you're making your money through telling everybody what the problem is, then why should you solve the problem? I mean, that's just logic. It's just like on that. I saw a commercial um, where the guy's in the dentist chair and the dentist says, man, you have a really bad cavity. And so the guy says, well, what are you going to do about it? He said, oh, I'm not a dentist. I'm just a dentist monitor. I'm here to tell you that you have a bad, you know, cavity. And that's what the conscious community, these talking heads in the conscious community are. They're just there to tell you what the problem is, but they're not there to offer any solutions. And when you're like me, who offers a solution of land, infrastructure, and nationhood, they really, really, really do not like you. So that's my basic overall point for this video. I, mean, I know it's not heavy on anything, you know, content wise, but I think that the message is simple and, and it just needs to be put out there that you need to start listening to people who don't have a vested interest in your demise, who don't have a vested interest in the so-called struggle, who don't make their money or get revenue from constantly putting out content talking about the struggle. Talking about black people, talking about how fucked up we are, talking about how we ain't going to do this and how we do and are, are just constantly analyzing our ass kickings and never offering any solutions or F, never offering any steps to take us from the position that we're in to something that's more successful and thriving. I mean, I thought that this would be fairly obvious, but a lot of times I feel like I have to state the obvious because I think something is obvious and it obviously isn't. You know, I make that mistake all the time and that's not that's not on anybody. That's on me. That's a flaw on my part, because I keep thinking that what I put out there is common knowledge because I know it. And that's not really the case. A lot of people just aren't looking at it that way. Like they hear these talking heads. And as long as you saying something black, they give you validity like, oh, he's talking that black stuff. You know, but some black stuff people find acceptable. And other black stuff, people run from like a with a 20, you know, they won't touch it with a 20 foot pole, which is what my content is. My content is rarely liked. My content is rarely shared. My content is rarely commented on. There's a there's a, a core group of people who do all of that. And I love them. I love my subscribers. I have almost 3000 subscribers. But yet, if you look at my videos, I went to check a video from 2014. And it had 166 views from 2014. We're in 2017 now. How is that possible if I have 3,000 subscribers? I know it's because of what I told you at the beginning of the video. I've demonetized my video. So if you demonetize your video or demonetize your content, YouTube algorithms you out and they don't really push you. So a lot of people who are on my um, subscriber list never know when I upload a video because... YouTube doesn't let them know. And I know this for a fact because I speak, I've been speaking to people for the past two days who are good friends of mine who are subscribed to my channel. And I asked them, have you seen my latest video? And I'm like, no, I haven't even gotten a notification. So this is the thing. If somebody has a vested interest in the struggle, if somebody gains financially from the struggle, then what you're going to get is what we got. What you're going to get is constant complaining, constant bitching, constant moaning. You will never see any calls for groups to come together and work and actually have a convention or either meet up or none of that. You're not going to see that because that's solution oriented material. You're not going to see that. And I know because I put out solution oriented content. Land, infrastructure, nationhood is my mantra to the point where people are sick of hearing it, which is kind of crazy because it's not viral. So how can you be sick of hearing it? I mean, this is probably just people that's used to hearing my content um, and not, you know, people outside of my circle, because there's no way you can get tired of something that's not spread around and shared or liked. You know what I'm saying? The people that... um visit this channel are a small demographic and I don't care because like I said my main concern is for me to use this channel as a way to express myself when I feel like doing it and that's the reason why I don't express myself all the time 
because I don't need to comment on every freaking thing that happens in the news. I comment on the things that interest me and when I feel the need to comment on it. So, anyway, um, I'll holler at you good people later. Peace.